any luck, now that I've cleaned up in here a little bit, we can get some stuff done. I've got uh, almost the entire garage open. I have to get rid of the cylinder heads. Two of these got to go to a bunny mine, two of these got to go to the shelf. Uh, then I've got some miscellaneous cement stuff to put away. My bucket of bolts have got to go over there in the corner. And then I got to put all those tools away. Before I can start any fabrication today. But uh, yeah, so that's what's happening right now, so I'm going to get to it. Hopefully here in a minute you'll see a really clean garage. So this is the last of all the crap on the floor. I got a little bit under there. The rest of this is all open and clean again. Finally. Jeez. Alright, so anyway, back to what I was doing. Finally. I have a real I have a real garage. What a load off. Now to get rid of all of this stuff. Alright, so what we're doing here. Is this is our piston uh, piston wrist pin stop. Or well it will be. It's gonna be this. Um, let me show you what we're aiming for here. This thing so I've showed in a previous video. You get it lined up back here and up here on your center line. This will be in a threaded position with a stop on it that will thread in and touch where the ring lands are to hold the piston still against those two pins, which are going to be half inch bolts brought in from the bottom and welded. And then this here, as you can see, it hits the wrist pin. Perfect. That little nut falls right in the middle of it. So what you then do is you will set this, once it's all made, to the proper height in that slot, lock it down, and you will set your depth. And what that's going to do is when I heat that connecting rod and shove that piston wrist pin through, it gives me a positive stop. So all I got to do is focus on getting it through there as fast as possible, and then I hold it there. This will start to uh, this will start to heat the pin, and they will lock together. And then that's done, and I go on to the next one. So what we're going to be doing is transferring this onto this. And I had this laying around; it was an old battery box off of a go kart, which uh, I was going to use on the engine run stand, but I really don't need to. And if I really needed to, I can always just flip this upside down, put a couple tabs on it where that'll bolt down and I can use it for two uses. Because <laughs> I do that sometimes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the surface up real good right now. Uh, and then I'm going to find my piston center line, scribe my circle, that way I know where I'm going to be putting the pins and the posts, welding this up, and then hopefully later today I'll be doing some pistons. And then some file fit on the rings, more stuff to see. So and as you can see I have got the garage good and clean now. So a few things to put away yet but I'm to a position now where I need to get started. So let me get on this.
the mess. You gotta keep it up as I go. Otherwise it gets out of hand in here. As you can see, it gets out really hard to build engines and fabricate things in this garage. It's a little tedious trying to keep all the metal shavings and things out of the stuff that's not supposed to go in, but hey, you got to do what I got to do, right? Okay. safety squints. My glasses, my glasses have, uh, my glasses have, uh, lenses that are safety glass approved, but I don't have side shields. I don't feel like making another trip to get a grinder put in my eyeball, so. TV.
weld in there. It's got a feet. It's got a feet to weld into. Makes a nicer weld. This little booger. This little one here. I'm gonna have to get a pair of pliers. Oh. That would be stupid to put your fingers that close. That's how people lose fingers. way to lose your sight forever.
got those tacked in place, I should be able to go ahead and take my magnets off and finish welding them. Uh, however, because this one's kind of thin and I want to be able to weld all the way across, I'm going to leave that there just so I avoid it trying to lean over on me with the heat. This side here, I'm only going to go and tack a couple more places because this isn't quite as significant because it's going to be down low. There won't be that load up top. I'm just going to run a final bead across the back of that and that's going to be done. These really don't need to hold a whole lot. I also need to tack weld the nuts on them. Give me a second here. I'll get this little set up. stick out just so I know that that will hit the center of the pin. Now on this side, thread them all the way down there, isn't it? Okay, on this side, I'll have one nut welded to this back here. Okay, and then there'll be a stop kind of a flat on the end of that. Pretend these are the pins. Let me go ahead and shut the welder off real quick. Pretend these are the pins. Then I'm about to drill and weld in from the other side. But you can see how this will go up against the pins, like so, okay, and then this obviously you run it in until <clears throat> it holds the piston tight, okay, 
and then you set your pin stop. So in this case, yeah, the pins wouldn't normally move, but in this case, I need to run the pin stop in a lot. So I run this this nut back. And I use an already assembled one to give me my pin depth. Like so. Once I've got my pin depth set, and I'm happy with my pin depth, and I'm happy with where the piston sits in correlation with the center line, <coughs> I lock it all down. I back this one out. Obviously, I'd have to unscrew this, but I back that, back that out. Pull the old assembly out. Set my new piston in. I would then heat the new heat the new connecting rod up. And I'd have my chilled um, wrist pin in my hand. So when that connecting rod was just the right temperature, I could slam it at home run that in, it's going to come in and it's going to slam, it's going to hit that stop and it can't go any further than that. And then I hold it there and then the piston is done. It's assembled, it's on the rod and it's ready for the engine. So I'm going to finish this up and I'll come back to it. Alright, well, as you can see, that's all set up. Here it is with our new piston on it. Now that the stop is set, we can use the wrist pin and piston to get our center line again. And that sets our wrist pin depth. That wrist pin will not go past that. So now that we have it all set up, this gets cleaned, the war gets cleaned. Okay, you don't want anything on these. But it'll scratch up the bore. You don't want anything in the bore that will scratch up things. And once you got everything ready, <coughs> You'll have your connecting rod hot. You'll center your connecting rod in there. And in one motion, you're going to go and hold it. Did you hear how it hit the stop? That ensures that that piston will be on there and centered. So when this comes back into the center, the connecting rod will also be centered in between piston. This will save me a lot of money in the long run because it cost me all of about eight bucks to make and I now no longer have to spend the time and the money and the gas to go to the machine shop to have this done. I can do this here in the garage.
it. Uh, as you can see, I've been precision with a full-size four and a half inch grinder for years. Uh, I will probably continue to cut them out this way. So uh, no, no, no sense of showing all that. We'll do some TV magic here, and uh, I'll be right back with some cutouts. All right, well, until next time, keep the shiny side up. We're going to see more of the supercharger here real soon. Later, guys.